this. Good morning, strangers. I want to quickly get into things with you guys. So that being said, I'm not going to dilly-dally on any of this. I'm going to read um the first chapter of I Am Death. I know I said l that I'd be uh, doing another story along with that, but um, after seeing how long everything took with Chapter 1 of Dawn of Emotions and Chapter 1 of I Am Death being roughly the same size, I wanted to um, get this going through. Y you know exactly what I mean, but this one's going to be a very simple one. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's just me reading, so, yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. This one, of course, has an has an epigraph as well because well I like epigraphs <laughs> death is not the greatest loss in life the greatest loss is what dies inside of us while we live Norman Cousins I first knew I was special when I woke up behind a waterfall Years later, I would come to find out I was born on that day. I'm using the tor ah, I'm using the term "born" rather loosely right now, since I'm not alive in the sense that two people came together to create me after a nine-month gestation period. I exist. That's it. I came into being. Ah, I came into being because I was needed. I was created by a young titan named Lana, who quickly passed out from the effort needed to bring me into existence. She's the closest thing I have to a mother, but I was created at my prime age. Yes, I have an age the second in the hundreds of years since I was born. Technically, I'm a holy deity, created to lord over a specific element or part of life. The first god created was the leader of all gods as well as the god of thunder. He decided to call himself Mjolnir to honor an old god. The rest of the gods came in time, but they played such a small role in my work that I barely paid attention to them. I remember that each of the other gods had two or three roles they had to perform, such as the goddess of love also having control over fruit-bearing trees. It got more and more complicated as the titans created more gods, but all I had to worry about was making sure people passed on to the next realm. My other role was pretty much automatic, which was a major reason why I rarely ever slept with anyone. I'd rather not... Mother Demigod. There was actually one person I may have done that for, but that's not where I'll start. My story, or at least the most interesting part of my story, starts in my home. A small mansion that houses everyone who works for me. I'd just gotten the latest workload from the fates when uh, I noticed one of my workers was on the list. It was fairly routine for me to be present for the deaths of people who would fight to remain alive. The crowd typically uh, consists of high-ranking officials such as nobility, politicians, anyone who has built up a name and a life for themselves. The biggest threat was those who worked under me. When I first started his death, I had, I had millions of people who needed to be escorted to the next room. I didn't rest for 48 hours because I was simply going back and forth, taking as many people through death's door as possible. Despite the fact that I've been at this for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, the first two days are the worst part of my existence. That's when I decided that I was going that I was not going to work alone. I'm not even sure how the old death god did it without any help, but I made sure to always get people who had one to five years left to live. I gave the power to help people I gave them the power to help people move on. It was easy for them since they got to enjoy life as me for a few dozen months. But when their time came, their souls fought harder than anyone else. I had to be there, and those were the times I had to work hard and fast. This worker wasn't going to be all that hard. He was looking forward to seeing his family again. I may have given him a purpose, but he kept a picture of his family on his desk. Yes, they all have desks. Beds, too. I may be death, but my workers are taken care of to the fullest extent of my abilities. I called Jethro to my office, pulled out my smartphone, and waited. There were a few fun apps that consumed what little time I had, but Jethro only took about ten minutes to come over. I heard the gentle rap of his knuckles against my door before he walked in. The man had a typical smile spread across his features as he came up to my desk. It's been three years since you came to me, I started. Oh my goodness, he exclaimed. Is my time up? I nodded and walked closer to him. 
Yes, well, not quite, but soon. I reached out to shake his hand, and his face lit up in pure bliss. Jethro heartily shook my hand, and some of the light rushed from his body to mine. I was wondered what it felt like to give my light away. After three years of taking it, I guess I had more than I thought. I felt much lighter, no pun intended. He still smirked. I chuckled and slowly shook my head. We have about three hours left. Go ahead and spend it relaxing. I have to go ask the Faith about your replacement. My body shook as I imagined a meeting with the three Fates. The old Fates were known to be three elderly sisters who were as crazy as they were fragile. The new Fates looked young yet stern. I couldn't imagine anyone else in their roles since they had been here longer than me. But seeing them was never easy. The Fates held truth the past, the present, and the future in their minds. Even I couldn't go against what they saw. Thankfully, the fates already knew that I would need a new list of potential workers, and I was delighted to find a manila envelope on my desk with the rest of my daily paperwork. I quickly leafed through the papers and stood on the f ah, and I stopped on the first name that popped out to me. Richard Jacobson, age 25. He's going to pass on in just over four years, but he was just fired from his job. He's slightly drunk tonight, and he's going to be drinking a few blocks away from someone I have to escort to the next room. That's perfect. I looked over all my paperwork again, then sent, eh, then sent out a notice to the worker who was really going to release the person so that I can make sure they know to skip the woman on their route tonight. After all that was taken care of, I looked over my work list and saw that there was only one other person I was assigned to do today. No kings, queens, politicians, lawyers, business owners, soldiers, or even orphanage caretakers are dying today? Jethro was it for me? I said aloud. I slumped down in my chair. This was unusual. I typically had at least a dozen people who needed my attention on any given day. I was free for the next ten hours and there was nothing I wanted to do. I didn't like having free time, so I uh, looked over the next few days, and it was nearly the same. I had a total of ten deaths planned for me over the next month. How? Why? Was the world just not dealing with as many big deaths? Did we finally reach stasis? That couldn't be it. Maybe it was just a short lull that was going to be followed by a rapid increase for the next few months. That had to be it. We couldn't be in a time of small deaths. That was unheard of in this day and age. I pulled my phone back out and called one of the titans. Lana would be able to calm me down for a bit if she wasn't busy. Even if she, ah, even if she was busy, she, she'd probably make time for me. I heard the phone ring once before. The slightly perky voice of the Titan who created me came through my phone speakers. Hey, Dizzy. Hey, Lana. I have an issue. Do you have a few minutes? Oh, sure. I just finished talking with Corbin. I actually came up, so I was. Ah, you actually came up, so I was going to call you later today. But since you're apparently free now, let's talk. You want to talk to me? That's eerie. I thought about that for a few seconds and quickly shook my head. Anyway, yeah, I have nothing to do today. Nobody's dying other than one of my workers and some random girl close to someone I'm going to be uh, going to about a job with me. Ah, that's a very weird sentence. I'll probably try and rewrite that. This hasn't happened. And I'm kind of freaking out a bit. Well, maybe more than a little bit. Wow, that was fast. Lana said. What do you mean? I, s I started to chew on the side of one of my fingers. A nervous habit I've been trying to quit for the past few decades. The dragons and the fates have been talking about people focusing more on the world as a whole. We're entering a time of peace. A time where some of the other gods will have more work. But you'll get a break. It's predicted to last a few dozen years. So what do I do? But the lack of deaths? Yes! I screamed out. I don't know what to do with free time. I just sleep and work and eat, and then I have some spare time. That doesn't last for more than a few hours. What do I do? Why don't you take a hobby or date someone? I'm not going to date. That will lead to demigods, and the world isn't ready for more me. It's not going to work out. Sweetie, calm down, Lana said, her tone becoming even softer at my... Ah becoming even softer. After my first few months existing, Lana took a more motherly approach to me when I started to freak out. I guess it fit since I was technically her daughter, but it was still odd. You don't have to procreate just because you start dating. 
For all we know, you could date women, and even if you have sex with a woman, neither of you are going to come a child. I promise. I took a few deep breaths and squeezed the armrest on my chair, then slowly released and relaxed for a moment. Sorry, Lana. What else can I do? Hobbies and dating are on the table, but I'd like more options. Why don't you come over and have dinner with me, Lana suggested. It's been at least two years since I've seen you, and I think that was just for a meeting of the gods and titans. Yeah, that was because the fates had checked up on everyone and made sure we knew what our roles were. A few gods were apparently acting. Yeah, that, she interrupted. So let's plan out a dinner. Maybe I'll invite some of the others so we can have a decent family dinner like we used to every few months. I miss those days. Maybe you can uh, also see what's going on with some of your other workers. Maybe boost morale and see what they think think so far. Uh, she knows. This is the job they've chosen to die in, so it's only fair you understand them, right? I nodded my head and wiped away a few tears. It's been a few decades since I asked about my workers and what they needed. I just keep on thinking about what they can do and what they need to do. Not like that will make them happy. Or not what will make them happy. And on my... Wait. Ah, sorry. See? Now I'll have to talk to Ethan about my uh, conversations with the Fates. I'll talk to you later, Aztis. Bye, Lana. And with that, the call was over. I felt dark, almost empty, as I w went to the kitchen where a few of the workers sat down for breakfast. Three of them waved me over to sit. Good morning, boss lady, Heather said as one of the cooks came out to hand me a plate of eggs, toast, and bacon. Good, good morning, Heather. Leslie. Colin. What's new? Colin shrugged and ran a hand through his thick brown hair. Just gearing up for more deaths today. We plan on going to a bowling alley in North Brimlake after work. Wow, I didn't know they had a bowling alley there. When was the last time I even went to North Brimlake? Yeah, it's been about... It's been up for about 50 years, so maybe you just never gone? Leslie said, trying to make sure there, there wasn't any attention. Bless her heart. I think I went there maybe 15 years ago, but I didn't have time to stay. I was most likely in the middle of one of my ships, and I couldn't really take a break. There were three kings visiting on different parts of the world who died that day, and the attacks were so close together that I barely made it to them without my time limit hit couldn't imagine having to travel around the world that quickly. I have trouble getting every hit in my sector. Heather didn't, s Heather didn't stop smiling as she spoke. It was almost unnerving how happy she seemed to be. Was a woman interested in me, or was this just a normal thing with workers these days? The other two seemed to be happy, but something was off with Heather. Maybe she was trying not to laugh. Did I have something in my teeth? No. Okay. Oh, God, what's going on? No, oh, wait, sorry. Oh, gods, what's going on? Okay, asses, breathe. Everything's going to be fine. There's workers who are going to... She's next. Crap, I have, to... I have to check that. I looked back over and took a bite of my toast. So what else do you guys have on your days off? Or do you guys do on your days off? Leslie instantly started to talk about her hobbies and how she loved to go out to beaches and collect odd seashells when she had no more plans with anyone that day. Heather drew animals and some of the people she helped into the after... Huh? Heather drew animals... Oh! Heather drew animals and some of the people she helped into the afterlife, while Colin used his free time to read science fiction and classical poetry. They all seemed fairly normal as far as humans went. After the others had to go to their sectors and start their ships, I went back to my office, realizing that the longest conversation I had with any of my workers with wait. Realizing that was the longest conversation I had with any of my workers in months. Possibly years. What kind of boss doesn't talk with a single employee? Even the worst managers out there knew a few things about a s select few of their favorite employees. Heck, they'd at least have a favorite employees. Can't remember the last time I ever gotten close to anyone, worker or not. And that's it. Chapter one of I Am Death, or at least that's where I'm planning on ending the chapter. Um, it's just a few pages, so yeah, page five. Whereas Dawn of Emotions was 
seven pages, and yeah. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you want, I will read uh, one or two more of my stories, but this is going up. Actually, uh, the uh, other one I hadn't finished processing yet when I started this, although it was almost finished processing. So, yeah, I'm going to save this edit it, get all this taken care of, and then we'll be good to go. Anyway, I will see you guys, well actually I will see uh, Patrick tomorrow, but I'll see the rest of you guys next week. Bye!